welcome back to the channel. If you're returning to this channel, um, thank you for well and welcome back. If you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button along with the bell notification, so that way you're updated on the new videos I'm creating all the time. So in this one, I talk a lot about personal development, and that's I believe that is absolutely essential. Um, that's the only way you're ever going to have a better you, a better life in general. However, at some point, we have to look back at the money. You see, this video is going to be all about how I, and you can too, upgraded my income almost double in the course of just about a year, year and a half. And I'm not talking some miraculous story. This is so easy, so ridiculously easy, that I could have done it far, far faster. However, um, as with most of us, it's like I spent a little time someplace, got comfortable, and then got uncomfortable. So, let's just jump right into it. So, first off, do you have a job? If you don't, it's alright. But at some point, you've probably had one. And you notice how... Whatever job that may have been, whether you're working a ton of hours or you barely could get any hours at all, one thing was always very consistent. Your pay rate was the same. Maybe you got, you know, yearly um, raises, but very likely not. You see, when you're in a job your ability to earn is constrained to that system. If you say you're you're like a what they call entry level position, you enter in, you get so many dollars an hour, just for the sake of argument, let's just say ten. You get ten an hour and you times that by the number of hours you you work and then you times that by the actual amount you get to keep. So if you're, you know, running a single adult, you're probably keeping about about 80, 83 cents on the dollar, more than likely. And maybe you're betting on that, you know, somewhat decent tax return at the end, but, you know, don't bother with that either. I mean, get your money, of course. And then you worked that job for a while, and then for whatever reason, you either got fired or you quit because you hated it so much, and you moved on to something else. And when you moved on to something else, you're probably making more in the next job. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you're an employee, your ability to generate income for yourself is constrained to the system that you're working in. Now, too many times I've seen this, and I've been I've done it myself, that we get comfortable in the positions we're in just because we get familiar with them. I'm not saying they actually are enjoyable. Some of us have had enjoyable jobs. I've had maybe two in my entire life that I'd call very enjoyable. Um, but those are those are rare as hell. You probably have none or maybe one, two tops. You know, they're just rare. But we get familiar with the stuff so it's very easy and we stick to it because of security reasons. We want that paycheck coming in all the time. And even though when we get the paycheck, it's probably gone like nothing as soon as we get it. It's probably allocated already to a whole bunch of different things, no matter what. And we have very little left over, more than likely. So, what I noticed is I, I would spend, I mean, I spent years in some places, and you're like, this is a very common theme, I'm sure you've seen this too. Everyone's talking about how unfair the pay is, right? And I'm not going to say i never done it either, because I have. And or like hoping for that pay raise, and it comes in and it's like twenty five cents, fifty cents, and you're like, well, yeah, the pay raise is nice and all, and then, the, you just continue on, and some people I've seen in some of the places I worked, they'd been there for, ten years, thirteen years, sixteen years, and, they were making maybe a buck more than I was. I've been there for a few months at most, and and we'd often be serving people who who'd come in and you know they're making like double, triple, quadruple. We are easy, and so I did this for a long time, and I'm sure you have too. You work a job, you work a job, you work a job, 
And then one day, you just can't take it any longer. It sucks. It's been sucking since day one, and you just try to ignore it. And then eventually it just builds up, and you're just like, I can't take this crap no more. I'm out. And you put in your, you know, two weeks notice if you want to be nice, or you just walk on the spot. I've done both, honestly. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm a saint when it comes to, like, jobs. It's like, I've as I've gotten older, I've, I've been more, you know, nice about it. I put in the two weeks, and you know, send that nice little letter that says, you know, you know, thanks for the opportunity, it was a great time, blah, 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 and, you know, looking forward to my next opportunities and and all that stuff, you know, very nice mumbo-jumbo letter, um, because I don't want to send the other one that said, basically, this place sucks, you suck, and I'm tired of working like a slave for, for slave wages, um, but, you know, being nice, I used to just walk on the spot uh, when I was younger, much more rebellious than I am today. Though I can't say I'm not rebellious even today. But, and you know I noticed like in the last maybe three, four years, is that when I left those confines, like I mean I stayed at one place for three years, and I got in those all three years, I got a 50%, I got a 50 cent increase in pay. 50 cent. And when I was trying to go for like management and stuff like that, because I'd been there so long and all that stuff, um... I would be passed over and passed over and passed over. And while I didn't like it at the time, I could, I can, it gave me a good perspective. And you know what happened? I left. Eventually I left. I took a little bit of time for myself and then I got back into it. And I went out and I started looking for a new job. And, but I would not settle for what I had before. So I went out and I was looking for a drastically higher pay increase. And I had the opportunity to make even more, but I chose to go with something else that made less, just a little bit less, but I thought it might be very interesting, so I went with that. And to give you some context, at one job I was making, after the pay increase, I was making $11 an hour. Yeah, I know, pretty crappy, right? And then, you know, that was after three years, and I worked like a freaking dog there. And so I jumped companies, and I made, and I started at 15 an hour. I was making more than my supervisors were at the last job and doing less work. And I already got a pay increase with them too, but and now I'm looking forward to maybe a ten dollar an hour increase. And I'm working on that. So from eleven to fifteen to fifteen fifty to twenty five. You see, under the constraints of a certain job, your ability to grow your income is very um controlled you're not going to get a massive increase in income. And your ability to work overtime, for instance, they'll keep that under control too in many respects because they don't want to pay the up, uh, the extra money to you or anyone, really. They just want to keep it for themselves. And, you know, that's okay. You just have to understand these systems. And so the easiest and best way I've ever found to, you know, get a noticeable increase in income and I'm talking from a job situation. Obviously, if you go out and start your own business, that's a whole other ball game. We're not talking about that on this particular video, but we're talking about jobs. Um, is to get a new job, get a better job. And I'm not saying better as in what you're doing. I'm saying better as in pay rate. Get a job that has a noticeable, huge increase in pay rate, even if it's a dollar, two dollars, or more, and you will notice the difference in your lifestyle. You know, a single dollar increase with no overtime is $160 per month by a single dollar. Of course, you $2, $3. Of course, this is without taxes being taken out yet, um, which is about $0.83 cents on the dollars, which you actually get. But to keep it simple, we're not talking about that. You see, loyalty in jobs is a joke. Is a joke. You could be there 10 freaking years to make a buck extra, two bucks extra. Now, if you love what you do, that's a totally different story. That's totally different. But if you believe that crap they tell you, where they're like, this this place is like a family. Oh boy, I'm sorry. Because one day you're going to see the truth. The only family there is, is the owner and his family or her family. When it comes to actual employees... If you aren't making the company money or you become an, a problem on any level, they'll kick you to the curb so freaking fast. And all that talk of family 
is right out the freaking window. You see, consistently, I've, I've never seen this not happen. Every person I know has seen this happen. They'll talk the good talk to start. When, the talk, when they're talking the good talk, look at what's being done. You're going to see a totally different story. Talk is easy. Actions tell you the truth. And the actions say one thing over and over and over again. This is a business and you're an employee. Meaning that if you get too far out of line, they may try and correct you. But if, you know, they're not going to nurture your individuality. And they'll just, they'll just fire you. And as far as your desire to make more money, for instance, you know, they may accommodate that to a little bit of degree. Here's a little bit of overtime here and there as it, their needs are suited. But your needs are not really a concern. They may tell you it is. Bullshit. It's total crap. When, when, when their slight desire on one end and your needs are on the other, their slight desire will win every single freaking time. Every time. So what I'm telling you is that if you're looking to make a, a, a realistic amount of money in a job, an increase, I mean, you can try for management, but don't make the mistake that I've seen so many people make before. Don't wait their 10 stinking freaking years hoping for your shot. The hell with your shot there. The hell with them if that's what it takes. If you know what you're worth, and I'm going to quote a freaking Rocky movie here. Yeah, bear with me. Go out and get what you're worth. If they're not going to willing to treat you in the manner that you know you deserve, screw them. Go find yourself a better option. Jump to it. You see, I made more. I made drastically more money from a job jumping ship to another job than I ever did, ever did, in any scenario, staying there, and and being loyal. You know how my loyalty was rewarded because I tried that. I tried that too. My loyalty was rewarded with write-ups because, you know, you can be their slave. For, you can do any, basically live on their, you know, at their beck and call for, for, for months, years. And the first time you, like, mess up for any reason or even ask for something for yourself, they can, depending on your employer, they can just shoot you down, write you up, treat you like trash, fire you. You know, what the fuck is it worth? Seriously, what the hell is that worth? And you know what? After I learned that lesson some time ago, years ago, I never pulled that, I never made that mistake again. As someone, so, someone said to me recently, my morality is intertwined with self-interest. And I had to laugh because it's true. You see, I won't do things, for instance, just for the sake of it's the right thing to do. The hell do I care about the right thing to do? You know what? My right thing to do is not the same as your right thing to do or their right thing to do. We all have different perspectives. And our experiences and upbringing have colored those perspectives. So, for instance, if I go in, and I did this once, I went in there and I was like asking for overtime and of course I got nowhere. And I'm sure you've had these experiences too. I got nowhere with it. And so, I instead, I learned the system that they're using. And I went around them. That chain of command crap. I don't care about that. I'm not in the military. And I'm not going to be stuck to it. So I went around them. I went to the system. And I because I learned the system, I used it to my advantage. And I had so much overtime, I didn't even know what to do with it. I had overtime coming out my ears. I was making more than anybody around me. And I'm not talking a little bit. I'm talking a massive amount. You see, when I was at, you know, the job, I would go after the overtime because, you know, time and a half adds up quick. And I was looking to make a certain amount of money, to, you know, at that time. And living by their rules wasn't, wasn't cutting it. I was already looking for another job, you know, a bigger paying job. But I was like, I learned the system, and I went after it. I had so much overtime, so consistently, that they had to start taking shifts from me for other people. Because I just pulled up, threw out this big fishing net and yanked everything. Because I learned the system. And I'm not saying that it's like I cheated the system or 
I hacked the system. No, it was simply put, I learned how the system works, and I went out, and I was first come, first serve, so I picked it all up. I picked up everything I could physically pick up, and then if if none was left, none was left. If stuff was left, great, someone else can take it. If it wasn't left, I too bad, I took it. And I, you know, took what I wanted first. And sometimes they took it away from me, and that's fine, you know. Sometimes I had I was forced to have a day off, <laughs> you know, workaholic type stuff. But the idea that, you know, that long time ago was like the idea that I should sacrifice myself for others, for instance, that I should actually damage myself and put myself in a bad position for what? The company? I learned that lesson already. It's bullshit. The hell with that. No. Where are you at your company because you love what you do and you do it for free? If that's the case, I, you're you're awesome. I love that. You're wonderful. If that's not the case, like it will be with most of us, you're there for money, right? You're in there for a paycheck. So you want to get that paycheck, and I wanted to get that paycheck, but I wanted more, so I went after it. And if they have a problem with that, they have a problem with that. And I can give a flying well, you know what? But and when the, it was all said and done, is I got the thing at the end of the year. 20% of everything I made, everything I made for the entire year was overtime. 20% of all my wages were, were was com was just overtime because I had grabbed so much of it. I stopped waiting on someone else to give me a shot and I went and took it. I took the shot. I learned the system. I grabbed it. And you know what? I have absolutely zero regrets about that. Zero. And twice they, you know, stopped me, you know, for a little while. And... And I was like, and I and I jokingly, but, you know, there's no such thing as a joke. It, you know, it was a true statement. I was like, you know, I was like, okay, you know, take the shifts from me if you like. But that's okay because you're not going to be able to stop me in the long run. And they didn't know what to say to that. They just did not know what to say to that. But it proved accurate because I still nabbed it all. I still, I mean, they slowed me down for a week, two I think there was only one month out of the entire year where they were like, didn't I didn't get any real um, overtime. I wasn't like padding the check like as as big as possible, and that. But I know the cycles too, and you know that quickly went away, and then the overtime started coming, and of course there I was again, and they weren't paying attention, and there I was with my fishing hook, just grab, 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 you know, reeling them in, reeling them in, reeling them in. I probably made more than. Literally everyone that works with me, every single person that works with me, I make more than them. Not because I make more per hour, but because I taught myself the system, which wasn't hard, not even even close to hard, and I t used it to my advantage. I just raked it in, raked it in, raked it in, raked it in, raked it in. I mean, the one month at the job, for instance, um, some people were, if you were doing base, you're probably doing about 20... 2400 you're probably pulling in 2500 on a, on the best month on that month i remember i made $5700 that month not taxed that was what came to me 5700 in one month because i was just using the system to my advantage not in like a subversive way or a cheating way but i'd go out and i took it for me and, and and I made damn sure that I got mine first. Because I already learned the lessons. If you're, you know, being loyal to a company, how many times did I had to watch someone get pulled into a room who'd been there for 15 or 20 years and get fired? It was sickening. I'm I'm, I'm standing uh, aside. I know what's going on. I've asked questions like, what's going on there? Oh, they're firing someone. The guy's been, in there for, been here for 20 years. 20 years of someone's life that they got and they don't give a damn, not a damn. Don't make that mistake. Don't be that guy in the in the uh, in the room, basically getting a pink slip after dedicating your entire life to some bozo who who fed you a line of garbage. You know, look at the writing on the wall. See what they're doing to other people. They'll do it to you too. And this isn't like a fear fear mongering thing, but it's the truth. No matter which way you go, no matter you get fired, 
today, you get, you know, 10 years down the line or whatever, no matter how many companies you jump, there's only one person that you're going to have to face in the mirror each and every day. It's yourself. Do what's right for yourself. Always. Always. It's an expression of self-love and self-respect. Don't sacrifice your well-being, your life, for someone who is not going to appreciate it. And a boss, that you know, they, I've heard this line so many times, we appreciate that. You, know that. you know what that word means to me? Nothing. You know why? Because it's backed up by nothing. Nothing. Except for once in a great while, a great while, you may have a supervisor that actually shows you that they actually truly care. Boy, those are rare. But most of the time, appreciation doesn't mean nothing. Nothing at all. Because as soon as the coin flips, you could sacrifice all your time to them. You could, you could do things for free for them. You, could do, you can hand them the freaking world. As soon as that coin flips, they'll throw you to the curb so fast you won't even believe what happened. I've seen it happen too many times. So don't be a sucker. Do what's in your best interest. Do what's in your best interest. Or you wish you had later. Because if you haven't learned this, that lesson by this point, you're going to learn it later. It's going to happen. So, now that that's done, welcome to my channel. Go and like, comment, and subscribe. If you agree with me, put down below how you're going to help yourself today. How you're going to go forward and make a better life for yourself. If you disagree with me and think I'm just full of nonsense, go tell, tell me, you know, letting you be as honest as you want to be, let the hate roll if you want, well, I mean, it won't bother me, it really won't, so, until next time, you have a wonderful day, or not, but that is a choice, so, choose wonderful day, and see you on the next video, later.